happened so many times over the last two years when people have said that Donald Jobless Trump was finished <laughs> for sure. You know, they said he was finished when he lost to an ancient artifact. They said he was finished when he was impeached for throwing a house party without his parents' permission. <laughs> when he got his hand stuck under the fridge trying to get a Cadbury cream egg that rolled underneath there. Just let go of the egg, Donald! <laughs> The thing people don't realize is Donald Trump doesn't care what anyone else thinks about his political future. And you saw that last night, because he swapped out the buffet table at Mar-a-Lago for American flags and made a big announcement. On stage at his South Florida estate, Donald Trump announcing the White House run he's hinted at ever since his 2020 election defeat. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. The former president impeached twice, including for his role in the January 6th insurrection, placing himself at the head of a movement to take power back for his supporters. This is our country, our government. Now at the center of multiple investigations, Mr. Trump said a weaponized justice system is the greatest threat to the U.S. We must conduct a top-to-bottom overhaul to clean out the festering rot and corruption of Washington, D.C. And I'm a victim, I will tell you. I'm a victim. That's right, folks. I'm the biggest victim of all. Every time I do something illegal, they come after me. I've done 30 illegal things. They've come after me at least 20 times. It's so unfair, so unfair. You know, as ridiculous as this is, I'm actually glad he's being honest about why he's running. He's running for the same reason every shirtless guy on Cops runs. The popo is chasing him. He said it. <laughs> But this, this is what Trump does. He's always the victim. The poor billionaire who only owns 15 golf courses and got to run the world's most powerful country for four years. Oh, woe is me. Oh. <laughs> if Trump was a prince in a fairy tale, the movie would suck and the princess would never get saved. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the dwarves would be like, please, we need you to save Snow White. And he's like, who's gonna save me? <laughs> Do you know how many scares are in my castle? I'm so tired. Do you know how hard it is to pick from the lavish banquet my servants prepare for me? They'd be like, but she's poisoned to eternal sleep. They'd be like, I wish I could sleep. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get comfortable in a bed of coins? So hard. But that's right. Trump is getting the old team back together for one more run at the White House. And of course, I say that metaphorically since most of the old team is in jail. The point is, though, <laughs> he's officially in the race. And you have to admit, this is an interesting way to kick off your presidential campaign. Vote for me, I'm a whiny piss baby. <laughs> Because that's what most of his speech was about. And apparently, he's not the only victim. No, according to the Donald, running America into the ground was also very hard on his family. And it hasn't been a joyride for our great first lady either. I go home and she says, you look angry and upset. I say, just leave me alone, I got... <laughs> hasn't been the easiest thing. In fact, my one boy, stand up, Eric. I think he got more subpoenas than any man in the history of our country. So unfair. Al Capone, you all heard of the great gangster? Al Capone got far less. Billy the Kid got almost done. Jesse James, no. Eric Trump got more subpoenas. He's, he's a PhD in subpoenas. They come from Congress. They... Yeah, that's right. No one suffered more from the Trump presidency than the Trump family. Yeah, while the rest of you were living it up in your border cages and enjoying an endless buffet of COVID, Eric Trump was being asked to answer some questions. What a hard life. And look, to be fair, I will admit that Eric has gotten more subpoenas than gunslingers like Billy the Kid and Jesse James. You know, and those guys in the Wild West, well, they got a lot of subpoenas. You know, we've all seen the movies. <laughs> for Mr. Ugly? Is Mr. Ugly here? <laughs> you know what, you guys look busy. Uh, I'll come back later, yeah? <laughs> That 
story that he told, that Trump told about him and Melania. Was, was anyone else as surprised as I was to hear it was Trump telling Melania to leave him alone? <laughs> yeah, Melania was probably like, oh, no, anything but that. Oh, <laughs> I'll give you some space. How about forever? <laughs> now, you might be thinking, this speech probably sucked, right? Because you're not a fan of Donald Trump. But it turns out, even the people who were there to see him didn't exactly want to stay. Trump displayed a fraction of his 2016 energy. The speech ran twice as long as scheduled and for long stretches left his crowd restless and silent. This was a teleprompter Trump, low energy, very, very unusual. He started to get bored and started to ad lib and it just turned into a rambling mess in my opinion. Candidly, he was quite subdued. Low energy. I thought this speech tonight was lame. I thought the crowd was lame. Reporters inside the ballroom at Mar-a-Lago noticed a handful of Trump supporters attempting to leave before Trump was done speaking, but security won't let them. <laughs> oh, damn. Say what you will about Trump, but the man takes his border security seriously. Nobody's getting out. We're going to build a wall. Build a wall. Keep them in. But for real, though, you know a club is shitty when you need a bouncer to keep people in. That's when you know <laughs> things are not going well. And I actually feel bad for the crowd. They were probably scared as hell. They're like, oh, no, we're trapped in here. Trump has us locked up. He's locked us up. He's locked <laughs> us up. <laughs> and you know, and you know, Trump aside, I will say, I will say, it is a little strange. I'll be honest, I think it is a little strange that so many people in the news media were fixated on how boring the speech was. Like, who cares? You know? <laughs> For years, they were like, this is not normal. And now they're like, this is too normal. Say, <laughs> say something about the Mexicans. We need ratings, Donald. <laughs> now, despite Trump's triumphant return, the word on the streets is that he might not have the support that he needs to win. Yeah, apparently Republican elites are clamoring for Ron DeSantis, all right? Uh, major Republican donors have announced that they won't back Trump this time. Even Ivanka released a statement saying she doesn't want to be a part of the campaign. Instead, she wants to focus on her family, which, of course, I understand. I mean, she's got that adorable little boy at home. Uh, <laughs> and I think she has kids, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of major players in the Republican world are not thrilled that Donald Trump is running again. Although, apparently, many Democrats are happy, yeah, including people like Bernie Sanders, who said Trump running may be a horror show for the country, but I gotta say that as a politician who wants to see that no Republican is elected to the White House in 2024, from that perspective, his candidacy is probably a good thing. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, Bernie, Bernie's probably right. Democrats should be praying for Donald Trump to win the nomination so that they can easily crush him in the general election. Yeah, that kind of thinking has never horribly backfired. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask President Hillary Clinton, what could go wrong? <laughs> but for real, people, are we really gonna do this again? No. Are we gonna do everything they say? The Democrats are gonna hope to face Trump? The media is gonna write him off because Republicans don't support him, forgetting that Republicans didn't support him the first time? Then he got on stage, roasted Chris Christie, slapped Jeb Bush so hard his whole family felt it. And then all of a sudden, the whole Republican Party was like, you are our king now, and Ted Cruz's wife is ugly. <laughs> and before you say, oh, but this time is different, we beat him already. Yeah, remember that he only lost to Joe Biden by 44,000 votes. And that was during a pandemic where Trump told everyone to bleach their lungs. He's probably not gonna do that again. <laughs> probably. And you were probably like, yeah, but, but this year, all of Trump's MAGA election deniers lost. Yeah, but they lost by, like, 1%. 1%. Those are not <laughs> around and find out margins, people. <laughs> those are the kind of margins where if anything is a little bit different next time, Trump could win those states. Gas prices could be higher. The economy could be worse. Joe Biden could keep getting older. Anything is possible. <laughs> but no, I guess everyone's gonna act out the same roles as 2016. Uh, the Democrats are gonna hope he wins. Republicans aren't gonna stand up to him until it's too late. And the news will give him live coverage for every single word that he utters. I just pooped again. Breaking news! <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if we're all gonna do the same things again, just let me know now. Yeah, cause this time I'll be prepared. I'll go visit all the shithole countries before the borders are closed. <laughs> I'll invest in tiki torches, and best believe I'm gonna stock up on a shit ton of toilet paper, cause I'm not using my socks again, you hear me? <laughs> That is not happening again.